This short video will cover those defences to defamation that are relevant on the internet. The first defence is that of truth, which is sometimes called the defence of justification in some of the defamation acts in Australia. It is a complete defence to be able to establish that the defamatory imputations are true in substance. This means that some small immaterial inaccuracies are okay so long as they don't aggravate the imputation. The difficulty with this defence of course is evidentiary. It can be hard to show that something is true. But if the defendant can show that the imputation is true, they have a complete defence. The defence only fails if a reasonable person would draw untrue inferences from what is said. Some of the defamation legislation also provide particular sections relating to the truth of particular imputations. So for example, there are some sections that say that proof that a person was convicted of an offence is conclusive evidence that the person committed the offence and it is therefore okay to say that somebody committed an offence. That is considered true. There is a similar defence in some of the defamation acts called contextual truth. Contextual truth operates where there is matter that contains several defamatory imputations and it can be shown that some of those imputations are true but not all of them. So say there is matter that has three defamatory imputations. Two are serious and one is not very serious. If the defendant can establish that the two serious imputations are true, then they may be able to rely on the defense of contextual truth because the less serious imputation will not further harm the plaintiff's reputation. The plaintiff's reputation is already damaged by the imputations that are true and the less true imputation doesn't really um, further that harm or doesn't diminish their reputation any further. So essentially under this defense, the court lets those less serious imputations slide. There is a related defense at common law known as the polypec defense. This defense looks at whether different Im imputations have a common sting. So for example, let's say there is a publication which alleges that John stole from Sarah in January, Ashley in February, and Peter in March. The common sting of these allegations is that John is a thief. If the defendant can prove that John did steal from Sarah and Ashley, then that will be enough to successfully raise the Polly Peck defense even if they cannot prove that John stole from Peter because there is enough evidence there to establish the truth of the common sting that John is a thief. Moving on from truth, there is also a defense of honest opinion. The defendant must have made an expression of their opinion rather than a statement of fact and it must be clear that this was their opinion. The opinion must be related to something that is in the public interest. Now this is not a high public interest test like in some areas of law. It just has to be something that affects the public in some way. So a review of a play is sufficiently in the public domain to satisfy this criteria. And the opinion must also be based on proper material. So it must identify what you're talking about in context. So again, if you're reviewing a play, the play is the material and it must be clear that you are expressing your opinion about the play. This defense is only defeated if the opinion is not honestly held. So it must be an opinion, it must clearly be an opinion and it must be an honest opinion. The final defense is that of innocent dissemination. This applies where the defendant published the defamatory matter as a subordinate distributor and they neither knew nor reasonably could have known that the matter was defamatory. This defense was established to protect those subordinate distributors 
for which it would be completely unreasonable to hold them liable for defamation or for republication. So these are people like booksellers, news agents or other vendors, librarians, postal services or broadcasters of live programs where they don't have effective control over the person making the defamatory statements. Online, intermediaries might try to rely on the innocent dissemination defense, but this will normally fail because, again, remember the test relates to knowledge and if the intermediary knew or reasonably could have known that the matter was defamatory and thus removed it or um, made some sort of response to it, then they will not be able to rely on this defense.